So hello everyone, I'm Shreyt. I'm a software development engineer. So uh, we are starting with this lead code premium top interview problem series. We'll be discussing each and every problem which are mentioned on the lead code top interviews. And also this will help you to crack your next coding interview in the top notch product based company. So let's start with the problem. In this lecture, we will study about this problem and we will try to find a optimized solution for this. Okay, so it says that we have been given n pairs of parentheses and write, we have to write a function that generates all combinations of the well formed parentheses. Okay, so let's say if we want to find the all possible combinations, one thing comes into our mind that is recursion. So let's look at the recursive approach. Okay, means DFS or recursion. Okay, so what happens in recursion is that we have n and we want to generate n uh, the valid parenthesis. So the valid parenthesis will be of length 2 into n. This is one thing. In order to generate sequences of length n, okay of length n so what it will be it will be a combination of n minus 1 this brackets and uh, n minus 1 closing brackets that is the whole idea and once all the sequences are generated there will be something of balance that will check whether they are balanced or not if this will be equals to 0 okay then we can definitely answer that yes it is valid and we will add it to our answer but uh, unnecessarily we are going through each and every result if whether it's valid or it's not valid in order to avoid that we will use a concept called as backtracking so in backtracking what we will do no we will just move forward looking at the constraint whatever conditions whatever conditions we are facing if that condition is failing we won't recurse it okay so that is the whole idea behind now what will be these condition these condition first condition will be we only need to add a opening bracket or a open bracket only when its value is less than n similarly we can add a closing bracket only when its value is less than the opening bracket so with the help of these two conditions, we will uh, code it down with backtracking. So backtracking is generally finding out the possible solutions and uh, we should only uh, move forward if the solution is following the conditions or obeying certain conditions. So let's code this one and it will give you better insights how this solution is working. Okay. Let's move to our editor. So here what we'll do no first let's declare this string s okay cool then we'll write a backtrack function in which we will pass in certain parameters s comma n this is done and we'll return this s Okay. Now our main focus is making this backtrack function. So it says int o in c string s and int n. So it is the count of opening, it's the count of closing, likewise. We'll check that if s of size, this is the base condition. If s of size is equal to is equal to 2 into n. So what we'll do? And also let's declare a vector of string that is storing our answer. So we'll just do answer dot push back. s 
and we'll return so this will be our base condition okay now we'll just check that if o is less than n what do we need to do we need to backtrack first first we'll push back this opening bracket and what we'll do we will look for all possible cases with this that is called the backtrack function and it will be passed with o plus 1 comma o plus 1 comma c comma s comma n and at the end we will just do a pop back in order to backtrack okay now the same thing we'll do with this now here this will be c and this will be o this will be changed to this c plus one and that return answer okay so this is the whole logic behind the problem let's try to run this let's declare it globally So it got accepted uh, and this will give us the result. Okay. So uh, try to code it once, analyze that how the backtracking function is working and those stuff. Thank you so much. We'll meet you in the next video.